I'm Nancy Strickland and this video shows you a new feature in PowerShell 2 that will be especially useful to system administrators, being able to execute PowerShell commands on a remote computer. If you've been using WMI for managing remote computers, you're going to like this new way of doing it. Both the machine that you're using and the machine or machines you want to execute commands on remotely will have to have PowerShell 2.0 on them for this to work. Now that will automatically be true if they're Windows 7 or Server 2008 R2 because they both come with PowerShell 2.0 already installed. Now I'm going to open a command prompt with administrative privileges and start PowerShell. First I'm going to show you the command to enable PowerShell remoting. It's a command that I've already run on the remote computer, the, the other computer that I'm going to use in this demo. It configures remote management on the machine it runs on. And executing the command requires administrative privileges too, of course. And I should tell you that it sometimes takes a while to get this set up correctly, especially if you're working in a secure environment, because there can be firewall issues and authentication issues and domain issues and such. Now what this is doing it's starting the, uh, the Win Remote Management Service. It's going to handle remote management and created listeners for it. Now I'm going to test that it's been set up correctly, and it looks like it has. So now we're ready to remote. The basic is pretty simple. I can just use a normal command like get process that'll show me all the processes, but I'm going to add the network name of the machine that I want to execute it on. Not this local machine, but the, the remote machine. And there are the processes. Now, you didn't need to know much about PowerShell to do this, just a few simple commands and that's it. But of course, you will need to know the PowerShell commands to do remote management tasks. And then you can put anything. So let me show you. This time I'm going to say invoke command. Uh, use the invoke command commandlet. And then I need to give it the computer name. And then inside these braces here, I can put a whole little pipeline. I'll get the services and pipe it to where object, the current object, status is equal to stopped and I'll get only the process that are uh, the services that are stopped and notice that I ended up nesting braces here and there you go now let's do something a little fancier we're going to set up a connection that can be used for multiple commands So I'm entering a PS session with the computer name Win7. And you see now that my prompt has changed. It now says Win7. So in effect, I'm now operating entirely on Win7. So I can just execute more than one command, like get process or get service, etc., without having to add the computer name each time. And I'm when, when I'm ready to exit, it's exit PS session. And of course, I don't have to give it a computer name either. And you can see now that my prompt has changed to show I'm back on my local machine. And I can also create something called a persistent session. I'm going to clear the screen first so we can see it. Okay, in a persistent session, I'm going to start with the command is new PS session. And I do have to tell it what computer I'm working with. I am not going to use the computer name flag. I'm just going to do this positionally here. And you can see that I've got a return value, and what's going to be put into that is the session ID information. Okay, to see that session ID information, I can just type the dollar sign S, and there it is. It tells who I'm connected to, what the current state of the session is, etc. Now to enter the session, I can use the session ID instead of the computer name it's the same thing really because that session information has that knows what computer to connect to 
And you can see that it knows, again, that I'm connected to Win7, although I didn't explicitly say that. I gave it the session information. And now, of course, I can carry out any commands I want to, but the thing that makes this uh, persistent session different from the way I did it before is that if I want to, I can create a variable here. We'll say x equals 42. Now I can exit my PS session, and then the session is actually persisted even though I've come in, uh, uh, exited from it, because if I enter it again and ask it to tell me, oops, what's in X, it knows that it's 42. So that information persisted across my entering and exiting that session. If I want to get completely out of it, I exit it, and then I say remove PS, oops, PS session, and give it the session ID. And that's it. The basics of remoting in seven minutes.